When we're talking about isotopes, we're talking about these versions of an element, say carbon, and the only difference is that they have a different number of neutrons. Big ideas, isotopes involve neutrons. The periodic table, that'll give us a list of all the different elements. It's called the periodic table of the elements. So we look up carbon right here, and carbon, that's atomic number six. Because it has atomic number six, that means it has six protons. That's what makes it the element carbon. We said that isotopes are different versions of an element that have different number of neutrons. So as long as there's six protons, it's carbon. But the neutrons, they can be different, and that'll give us isotopes. Let's take a look at that. So here we have the three primary isotopes of carbon. They all have six protons, because the atomic number for carbon is six. The thing that's different are the number of neutrons. Six neutrons, seven neutrons, and eight neutrons. And when we add neutrons and protons, six plus six, that gives us the mass number 12. That's how we name these. Carbon 12, six protons, six neutrons. Carbon 13, seven neutrons and six protons. The key idea is we have an element called carbon and it's defined by six, six protons, that's its atomic number. But the isotopes of carbon, they can have different number of neutrons. And our neutrons and our protons give us the mass number. If we took a sample of carbon, a block of carbon, and we looked at all the individual atoms, we'd find that most of them are carbon-12. There'd be some carbon-13 and even a little bit less, in this case, carbon-14. Because most of them are carbon-12, when we average these masses, we end up with something pretty close to 12. This is the average atomic mass. So it's not perfectly 12 because there are different isotopes of carbon with different masses. So try this to make sure you understand what's going on here. What changes and what doesn't change when we add additional neutrons to the nucleus of an atom? Let's start with what doesn't change. We don't change the number of protons, and because of that, it doesn't change the name of the element or the identity. It's still carbon. What does change is the number of neutrons. And when we have more neutrons, that means the mass number increases. Still the same element, carbon, but the individual atoms we call isotopes. So let's really visualize this so we have a good mental picture to draw on. So let's build some isotopes of carbon. So we know that carbon has an atomic number of six, so we can put six protons in the nucleus. Four, five, once we get six, we now have carbon. Of course, since these protons are positively charged, our net charge is going to be positive six. And our mass number, that's six as well. So let's make it a neutral atom by adding six negative charges, six electrons. And six, now it's a neutral atom. Protons and electrons, they're the same. So the charge is zero. Now we'll add some neutrons. So let's look at stability too when we do this. Right now it's not stable. All these positive charges pushing away from each other. The neutrons will help hold those together. So let's add some neutrons until it's stable. One, two, four, five, six. That is now a stable atom of carbon. It's called carbon-12 because we have six protons and six neutrons. What happens if we add another neutron? Is it still carbon? Of course, because it has the same number of protons, the atomic number six, and it's still stable. This is an isotope of carbon as well. Six protons and seven neutrons, we call it carbon-13. Let's add one more. Now it's unstable. We have six protons and eight neutrons, carbon-14, but it's unstable, which means it might break down, it might emit some radiation. In nature, there's a trace of carbon-14. There's some carbon-13, but most of it's carbon-12. That's why the average atomic mass is 12.01 on the periodic table. So pause for a second and answer this question. Are all isotopes radioactive? We can see here that carbon-12, that's a stable atom. It's not radioactive. Carbon-13, that's stable as well. But when we get to carbon-14, that isotope is unstable, so it would be radioactive. Let's wrap up with a question. Can isotopes form chemical bonds? If you think about it, the answer is yes. Chemical bonds, those involve electrons. 
the electrons on the outside of the atom, not the neutrons. Look at carbon. We have carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Since isotopes only differ in the number of neutrons, they really don't react that differently from each other. They pretty much have the same chemical and physical properties. There are slight differences that allows us to even separate them, and there are some biological differences as well. While isotopes are a very important concept to understand, as chemists, when we carry out chemical reactions, we usually aren't concerned as much about the isotopes that might be present. For instance, if we carried out a reaction with carbon, there would be different isotopes. But we don't usually worry about that because the difference in the properties and the reactions are very small. This is Dr. B with an introduction to isotopes, and thanks for watching.